Gemini, welcome to your mid-monthly update for uh, April of 2021. My name is Brandon Tobias. It's an honor to have you here on my channel, Science of the Soul and Stars. If you're new here, we do weekly and monthly horoscope updates for your astrology sign in love and in life because we believe love is the greatest catalyst to helping you grow, transform, heal, and step into your greatest soul purpose. So welcome to my channel. If you are new and want to have those weekly and monthly updates, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as part of the soul family. And do me a favor, if you do enjoy this content now or in the future, hit that like button. It helps this channel and video grow so we can guide more people. Finally, Gemini, we go live every single Sunday. I thought I'd let you know. And it's an amazing event, collective reading for the twin soul, twin flame situation. And we're building an amazing community. So if you want to be a part of that, be sure to join in this Sunday here on YouTube and hit, the, hit that bell button as well. It helps you be notified whenever I go live. Now, let's pop right into your reading without too much more. What I'm going to do is open the ceremony, call in divine guidance, um, and begin with a channeled tarot reading. Last thing I'll say as a disclaimer is these readings are general, and they could have to do with love or other areas of life. My job as a tarot reader is to describe the energies for your sign. Your job as a listener is to assign those energies in whatever primary area of life they belong to, whether it be work, career, business, family, love, or friendship, or anything of the sort. Okay. These are general energies for your highest good, love, and life. Let's open the ceremony get into it. Open the ceremony now between myself and the sign of Gemini, Sun, Moon, Venus, and Rising Sign for the rest of April 2021, now as I speak. Uh, Spirit, allow me to channel for the highest good and healing for Gemini, uh, now and in the future for their highest good and healing through the power of unconditional love and unconditional love alone. Thank you so much. The ceremony is now officially open. All right. I feel like I repeated myself a couple times in there, but that's okay. We are being willing to forgive ourselves, Gemini, for not being perfect. All right. So we're using the universal worth. Spirit guides, loved ones. What are the highest energies that Gemini needs to know for their highest good and healing at this time in love and in life? Thank you so much. We have the Ten of Wands feels like you are either coming into or grabbing hold or carrying quite a load, um, quite a burden, quite a weight here. Okay. Um, I feel like for whatever the word transfer, transfer, transfer upon you comes into mind. So I don't know if you're taking up some burden. It's what it feels like. Or picking up the slack somewhere or you're just t deciding to engage with something that's really heavy in terms of the effort or the work or the commitment required. But there's something here that you are definitely being involved in or you're involving yourself in energetically to have a piece of. King of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles, the Four of Pentacles. This is something that's been with you for a little while, I feel. It hasn't gone away. Okay, emotionally, energetically, there's something or someone or a situation that has been with you in your heart for a little while that I feel at this time, it's really coming to the forefront that you're wanting to get it to move a little bit or to pick up the slack or pick up the weight. And it feels like in terms of finances here, you're wanting to come in with a bit of a solid commitment or offer. Actually, commitment doesn't feel too solid to me. It feels like you're wanting to come in with a solid offer of some sort that is stable and that is very real here, very tangible, the King of Pentacles. So I kind of feel like you've been preparing yourself in some way, coming on this journey or being on this journey in order to get yourself ready to offer or to be stable enough to be able to present to someone some, some, uh, particular gift of some sort or so, some particular presentation or some particular offer. Nine of Pentacles also could indicate that you are still in the midst of becoming that. And that is your main focus is becoming stable, independent, and potentially uh, focusing on finances in your own individual life in order to become someone who can provide or is capable of being uh, providing. With the Three of Swords and the Strength card, there's definitely something here in your heart that it feels like you may not have acknowledged or you're not acknowledging at this time, 
or whatever it is, is a bit overdue. <laughs> That's the word that comes through. It's like overdue to open up and to be feeling whatever this three of swords is, this pain that's been here for a little while, um, it's starting to break open, okay? So I feel like part of you here has just been focused on your individual wealth and assets and stability, but then right in the middle of your heart here, there's also like a heavy weight or burden you've been carrying, either in life or emotionally, or both actually, it kind of feels like both, where there's just been a lot of hurts and there's a lot of discipline that's needing to happen when it comes to your well-being, okay? Discipline, when I, when I say discipline, I mean like feeling all of this weight and pain and then still continuing to stay disciplined on progressing through it, okay? Instead of having this lead you astray, if that makes sense. Because it's this woman is taming the beast inside, so this beast is kind of, you can see, not very happy. And uh, it's almost like there's someone almost smothering this beast. And I'm equating this beast to the Three of Swords, meaning this is, might be the hurt in your heart that you've been trying to control, or you're trying to control the hurt in your heart to not kind of look at it or feel it. And it might be necessary at this time for you to do so because of whatever else is going on in your life. Let's see more. Three of Wands... The moon, the page of pentacles, the sun card, and the lovers. Okay, wow. All right, Get, getting straight to the, straight to the point. Um, <laughs> it feels like there's an apology needed on in some way, shape, or form in your love situation or, an emotion, or in, in an emotional situation. Because we have the sun card underneath the three of swords with the page of pentacles. In this deck, the sun card is someone really kind of looking remorseful. And coming up to give an offer of some recognition or apology or just like, you know, hey, I kind of messed up in this way. Like, please don't hate me. Um, and it's only the three of swords, which really makes me indicate that you're either feeling like you need to give this to someone. Like you need to share this with someone or share your true feelings and kind of apologize because Page of Pentacles is here too. And that's kind of this tangible offer of something solid of like, hey, um, I know I've been acting like this or I've been being like this or kind of closed off or walled off is kind of the word I'm getting walled off here for Pentacles. But I'm sorry. And for what it what it's worth, I really, truly love you um, from the bottom of my heart. Because this is underneath the strength card, which would indicate that even though there's a lot of hurt that you're that you might be hiding, uh, or that's inside with the lover's card it's almost like this love has given you the strength to to carry on okay um and it's this love still that also has you be strong enough to offer this to someone this apology or this recognition or really to persist through this hurt okay so not the easiest reading so far but there is definitely something that's driving you here to become a stronger better and more solid person okay the because the four of pentacles too right it's really creating stability and when i think of gemini right we have almost like the opposite cards of what i would expect from gemini's reading king of pentacles nine of pentacles four of pentacles these are all very earthy grounded stable cards and gemini is kind of the opposite where it's like just hey let's go with the flow let's go here let's go there let's have a good time let's be social let's talk and this is kind of like rooting you down so it's kind of like something that's inescapable in a way that forces you in the best of ways the growth most growth growth oriented ways to face your true feelings the deepest parts of yourself and to become more a more stable version of yourself so that you can present something tangible in love and in life we have the moon card and the three of wands you might be afraid of a commitment of some sort or have a fear of really being able to move forward with the potential offer or vision or commitment that you see with the moon card could indicate subconscious fears around independence and finances. Maybe you're not uh, super confident in your ability to provide for yourself uh, or to provide for, uh, sorry, I'm changing the computer screen, um, or to provide for someone else or just to be independent in that way. Okay, because so, this is really like 
Nine of Pentacles is your own individual way of making money and really good money in your life with your your essential skills and your assets of yourself. And the Moon card is, is that really going to be able to provide for me in this way? Is this really possible that I can actually move forward with a certain um, vision or offer a commitment that will be sustainable and successful? Okay. So there's really two different parts of life that are going on that's going on here, Gemini. Um, you know, one part is your own kind of life vision and stability. The other part's definitely around love. And they're kind of right here, both, you know, on either side of, of themselves in your reading. King of Swords, the Fool, and the Queen of Wands. So King of Swords is definitely, I feel it's a person for whatever reason. I feel that this is a person in your life who... There may be some hurt around. You may feel like you've hurt them in some way by having maybe a little bit of your wall up, or maybe it's the opposite, but I kind of feel like it's you towards them. Um, and this is maybe why you're coming towards them or you're showing okay, the truth towards them if you are. You may not necessarily even be doing that. You may. I, I kind of get that you are. But even if it's on an energetic level, you might be feeling this of like, um, you know, this person gives me the strength and courage to persist on because they may they may be inspirational. Okay, with the sun card, that may be your inspiration. King of Cups. Wow, the Emperor. Okay, a lot of masculine energy in here. And the High Priestess. So that's what I, I kind of sensed, right? The High Priestess is... That silence. So I I couldn't see it yet, but this confirms it for me. You may not actually tangibly be telling this to this person because the high priestess is kind of knowing something in silence and not necessarily saying it. So again, you might have this feeling of inner inspiration and courage because of someone that is a twin soul, because of someone you really feel deeply about, uh, that you're connected to on a soul level, that you feel destined to be with, destined to come around uh, with and be with but the emperor and the king of cups really represents to me you working on your ability to provide i keep getting that your ability to provide your ability to be stable your ability to claim your throne here nine of pentacles with the emperor and to make money um in your own way but really having stability and control over that and yeah and yes for some reason yes some control is really important it's like the more you gain control and clarity around how you can provide wealth for yourself and stability and independence, the more confident you become, which is important because I feel you need to be confident in love. And in order to gain your confidence, you have to be stable in your own life, financially and in other ways. King of Cups with the Three of Wands. Uh, you really, again, that essence of strength because the King of Cups in this deck to me is walking strong with the combination of strength and love. So you're learning to balance walking forward in strength, but also with love and opening your heart and feelings. So I feel part of you here, right, is practicing that strength and the ability to move forward and ability to be stable, strong, independent. The other half here is opening your heart up and letting all that, the truth come out in yourself or maybe with someone else. I'm not really getting that. So that you can walk forward with your true strength, which is walking forward in love and in stability. Love and stability. That's the two themes of your reading, Gemini. Page of Wands, the Star card, and the High Priestess. I got to say, first thing that comes to me here is someone thought the grass was greener on the other side. The Page of Wands is literally in this deck the essence of that card. And I'm kind of getting it might be you, Gemini. Um, for whatever reason, I, again, take it as it resonates if this is someone else in your life, but I kind of get that you felt that the grass was greener on the other side and you wanted to go explore. And that's why there's this page of pentacles, four of pentacles, because you realized, oh crap, like whatever this is that, well, I know what it is. It's this, <laughs> whatever this person represents to you emotionally never went away. And in fact, it was just maybe something you were not recognizing as a true, the truth, okay, behind it. So that's here, right? And take that as it resonates, of course. But I feel like you're really realizing deep down the truth of how you feel, particularly about a certain person. And you're willing to come to terms with that now, at least within yourself. I'm not sure if you're going to do it with someone else. Wow. 
So that's three kings now and the emperor. So a lot of masculine energy here. The king, the king of wands, the world card, and the page of swords. So there is this really kind of um, expressive energy of wanting to move forward in a certain direction. And to be in a very powerful state. You know, it's even an impulse of... it's The king of wands... The first thing I'm getting with this is it's kind of this energy of wanting to be in control again, but wanting to be in control of your emotions and when it comes to love. Because the King of Wands is this really strong, but also kind of like a player energy. And with the World card here, it feels like the end of that phase of your way of being. So if you were in a more masculine way of uh, kind of that's this non-committal player energy when it comes to love so that you can maintain control over your emotions and not get hurt, <laughs> which is kind of what I feel the essence of this reading is about, then that phase is coming to an end or needs to come to an end. Page of Swords says you might have a, um, a temptation to kind of run off in that direction again when this gets really serious because it is serious. And, wow, and there's the fourth king, king of swords, right? And the advice here really is to not. <laughs> to not do that. Because uh, I feel you've already done that. Okay. And now the opposite of that is the best for your growth, which is, hey, being stable. The hanged man, right? Kind of backing off, slowing down, right? We'll leave that one out because that's a perfect little draw there. Um, and pulling your energy back and really getting truthful with yourself and not having it go out to different places and people. Ten of Wands is clarified by the Eight of Swords, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Queen of Wands. So there's the Queen of Wands and the King of Wands facing different directions. I do feel this burden here with the Eight of Swords, Knight of Pentacles. It's someone definitely that you want to potentially be with or to claim that you feel is a match. Uh, but Nine of Pentacles, you may not feel ready. So I keep getting this energy of you're not feeling quite fully ready for this person or to be with this person or to present yourself to this person. You know that there needs to be some recognition of what you feel, maybe an apology, kind of, uh, kind of an admittance of, of the space you were in energetically of wanting to explore the grass on the, on the other side. But High Priestess tells me you're kind of still... Just knowing this without expressing it for whatever reason. It's inside of you, but you're not speaking it. And it might be because you're afraid. Eight of Swords here with Knight of Pentacles, Queen of Wands. You're... F I don't know. Something comes up in terms of questioning as to whether or not you are able to claim this or you're worthy of claiming this, right? Or that you're enough to claim this. There's that kind of questioning. And Knight of Pentacles tells me you might not feel stable enough again. Because the Knight of Pentacles is trying to get their life in order. Not a bad thing at all. Trying to get their life in order to become stable. You have the King of Pentacles, your first card with the Knight of Pentacles. So that you can claim someone you feel is a match. Now, Eight of Swords being there. I'm not sure why that's there. But again, what comes to me is maybe... Just kind of generally a fear of this process for whatever reason. There could be a fear of loss you might have. Like it, you might take, you're like, oh, you're like, what if I take too long? Or what if this person's not around? Or what if this person rejects me? Or what if I'm not strong enough to continue to bear this weight? Ten of Wands. There's some type of fear around this process that you're in. But my advice to you would be just to trust the process. Temperance. Give yourself patience. Give yourself time. Um, give yourself temperance. Because if this person's made for you, which you have the lovers, the sun, the star, <laughs> which, you know, and the king and queen of wands facing different directions, if this person's made for you, then you'll find them and they'll find you when the time is right. There's the Hierophant card popping up for some reason. And the queen of cups on the other side of the deck. So there's definitely a match here. Perfect match made in heaven. Let me get three final advice cards for Gemini here.
We have the two of wands, the three of cups, and the wheel card. Interesting. So, the, um, interesting. We have the two of swords underneath the deck with the hierophant card too. That's really interesting. I almost feel like there's a decision or a crossroads you're facing, Gemini, around possibilities in life and in love. Because one of them here, the Three of Cups, to me is coming across as reconciliation and also enjoying life. And also fulfilling your destiny here with the wheel card. And with the two of swords and the hierophant, it feels like you're on the path of realizing that specific possibility of destiny when it comes to being with someone in particular, coming together or reconciliation with them. And you're wanting to fulfill that destiny. And that's why you're moving forward towards them. But the two of swords here with a hierophant and the queen of cups underneath that really asks the question, are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to stay committed? Are you willing to open your heart to your truth, queen of cups? Okay. So I basically feel, I'm feeling Gemini, yet, you know, there's... A bit of a crossroads and a decision that you got to make when it comes to love and life. On the one hand, I feel that you can continue to be more exploratory or casual or maybe even fling oriented when it comes to love and to continue to explore the grass on the other side, which I'm pretty sure you, you've already done that and it's, it's proven itself to be not what you really want or need in your life because we have the four of pentacles three of swords so it tells me your exploration from the past has not gone well <laughs> and in and uh actually what's resulted is like this realization of love and destiny you feel with a certain person so your choice is this do you want to continue doing what hurt you already in the past or would you rather make the other decision to actually put effort and carry this weight and fulfill your destiny when it comes to life, but also with a certain person. That's the choice that's facing you. And um, the choice is yours always. But one choice, of course, is maybe less progressive or um, I guess the less higher choice. I don't know how to, way to put that. My brain's failing me when it comes to your life meaning it won't lead to the highest possibilities in love and in life. And the other choice will be harder, but also much more amazing and, and progressive and synchronistic and magical and fulfilling. <laughs> okay. So I feel this is part of your karmic lesson as well, Gemini, to make that choice and to choose what you want to do. But I would recommend, of course, choosing the harder path because there is a lot of amazing stuff in love and in life if you do choose that path. Okay, and if you do choose that path, keep on going. Uh, as long as you choose that and continue to stay progressing towards that uh, ultimate path, then you and your person will find each other in the perfect amount of time. All right. Gemini's, that's what I have for you for your mid-April update. Thanks so much for joining me in this reading. And again, if you haven't already and want to join the Soul Family, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this content, if you want more of it, and you want more people to see it, hit that like button. And if you want to join us on the weekly Sunday live, I'd love to have you there. We'd love to have you there. Be sure to hit that bell button so you're notified when I do go live. I appreciate you, Gemini. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.